Today we discuss the com with the Commissioner for Information in Delta State, Charles Anyagu, on the just concluded governorship elections in Delta State. And PDP suspends former Governor of the Kitty State, Ayodele Fayoshi, former President of the Senate, Pyo Ganyan, and two others over anti-party activities. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgu Abdaji. The governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Sharif Oborovari, was declared winner of the governorship election in Delta State by the Independent National Electoral Commission. According to the results announced on Monday by the resident electoral commissioner, Mondo Udotom, Sharif won 21 out of the 25 local government areas collated in the state to defeat his closest rival, the All Progressive Congress candidate, Ovie Omoagege. Sharif pulled 360,234 votes. Omar Gege pulled 240,229 votes, while the All Progressive Grand Alliance candidate, Chief Gra uh, Great rather, Ogboru, got 11,029 votes. However, the Delta All Progressives Congress APC Campaign Council has rejected the result of the Delta State gubernatorial election held on the 18th of March as announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Also, in a statement by its Director of Communications and Media Strategy, Ima Niboro, the Council dismissed the result declared by INEC as a Pyrrhic victory for the People's Democratic Party, PDP, which will be overturned by the sheer weight of evidence against it. Also, the Delta State Governorship candidate of the Young Progressive Congress, YPP, Dr. Sonny Ofege, has vowed to take evidence gathered from Saturday's governorship and state assembly elections to the international community for appropriate actions against Nigeria, not just Delta State. Well, joining us live to discuss this is the Commissioner for Information in Delta State, Charles Anyagu. Thank you for joining us, Honorable Commissioner. Thanks for having me. Good evening. And let me apologize for not being able to uh, join you yesterday. It was just a, a circumstances quite beyond my control. Okay. I'm hope, I hope you will uh, pardon me and forgive me for not being able to show up. On live TV, yes. Outside live TV, I don't know. <laughs> we can discuss. I'm, I won't ask you to go to court. Okay. <laughs> that, that's the point I was getting to. Anyway, it seems to, to me that everybody in Nigeria now is just is so confident if you win an election, whether by crook or any way, you can just say go to court and all that. And in Delta State, they are also uh, protesting other parties are protesting that the election was not clean enough, it was not good enough, it was fraught with irregularities, it was fraught with uh, um, election, permit the word, malpractice and all that. Uh, what is your response to the, the complaints from especially the APC and the YPP? Well, I can tell you that the election in data was conducted largely in conformity with the Electoral Act. And we are not going to ask anybody to go to court because we know the distractions that going to court brings to any administration. But if uh, any of the political parties that lost in the course of the election chooses to uh, take advantage of that provision in the electoral act that you could um, uh, protest the outcome of any election in court, we will not uh, begrudge anybody who chooses to do so. But what I can tell you is that that election was won fair and square by Sheriff Oborobori because the, there are many factors that have in the course of this uh, deliberation. We'll be able to look at those factors that largely contributed to the victory of Sheriff Oborowori and which at the same time also led to the defeat of um, his uh, closest um, rival, the person of the Omwa Gege of the APC. The YPP is more or less not in contest in that election, so I wouldn't want to uh, waste the, your airtime discussing a party that was nowhere to be found in the course of that election. Perhaps if it were to be the Labour Party candidate that came third in that election, even if it was a distant third, we could begin to give that a, a thought in terms of a discussion. So I want to restrict myself to what happened to the PDP, how we won, and how the APC lost. And so, but I can tell you that the outcome is a very, very clear reflection 
of the desires of uh, the people of Delta. The few areas where we had skirmishes were largely triggered by the ambition of the APC candidate to want to force himself on Deltans. And of, of course, he took steps that uh, triggered some level of uh, violence in some quarters, which was also quite minimal because the number they spread wasn't that much. Largely, in his own local government, and then in the local government of um, our former governor, as um, it, uh, Ugeli North and Ethiopia uh, West. And so those were the two areas where we got reports of uh, some skirmishes. But at the end of the day, the outcome of that result is a true reflection of what the people voted. And I stand to be corrected. Anytime, any day, we were very much willing to defend our result because uh, indeed we allowed the beavers, thank God the beavers worked. We made use of the beavers. Uh, like I said, in the course of this discussion, I can tell you how we got our victory and how he secured his loss. Okay, uh, but you did mention something that was really funny to me. Um, in other climes, it shouldn't be funny, but uh, you said that YPP candidate came, uh, did not even come third in that race. But <clears throat> we've seen in Nigeria, this same Nigeria, where a sitting governor right now uh, came this third. Is not <laughs> okay, but I just needed to point that out. The, but it's the same judicial system, so I just needed to point that out, that any position in Nigeria, we don't know what happens in the courts. But having stated that, doesn't it give you any, any problems if there's, a, there's been uh, an antecedent of something like this happening? Even the person who came a distant uh, foot uh, becoming the governor, doesn't it worry you? that maybe when it goes to court, some of the evidences they are claiming to have could uh, affect your party's victory? Well, I must first of all admit that um, the judiciary largely have been able to live up to expectation in a number of uh, landmark cases. And it's just that, uh, like they said, the little feces that spoils the innocence. In some other instances, you have some of these um, not too pleasant uh, judgments either because they, are, they do not flow according to the reasoning of members of the public or does not have substantial ground in law. And as such, you begin to doubt the ability of the judiciary to do the right thing. A very good example is what happened today. You could see what happened with respect to the reversal of the tribunal judgment in Oshun by the Court of Appeal. I can tell you that the majority of Nigerians are happy because they believe that that judgment is in line with their yearnings and aspirations of particularly the people in Ocean State. And so the same judiciary where you could have individuals who possibly could defer judgment based on certain um, uh, primordial sentiments or certain uh, factors outside the consideration of the law, the same judiciary you also see a whole lot of judges who indeed have been able to give landmark judgments, who are able to defend uh, the the judicial sector and of, of of course stand in defense of our laws so i would not want to begin to entertain any fear just because some judges at certain times did not um, progress in line with the thinking of members of the public we do have hope in our judiciary uh, you cannot um, like you said the people get the leadership they deserve you can't go into a rotten mat and begin to search for a, a head uh, the whatever decay you have seen in the judiciary also is uh, pervasive in other sectors is a reflection of where we are found ourselves as a country. So if we are, talk, we are talking about the need to have fears, uh, we need to have a holistic uh, appraiser of our country in different sectors, whether it's an INEC, whether it's in um, the media, whether it's any sector, so that at the end of the day we begin to have a country that works. So to answer it directly, we don't have any fears that we are going to defeat anybody who decides to challenge this victory of Oboruori in court because uh, the election was won fair and square, and we were very much convinced that it was uh, the, what the Pangwai produced that the, the tapa brought home. There wasn't any element of any other extra liquid to, to boost the content of the, the, that palm tree. Okay, during the electioneering, a lot of things were thrown up. Uh, one of them was that uh, the, your principal did not perform so well in every part of the, the state. Uh, could that be the reason why uh, the margin between you, uh, your party and the APC was that small, because I would call it small, for someone who was a VP candidate in the election uh, to have someone rival, uh, a rival rather, get so much votes in his state, his home state, and even lose in some, uh, in some areas. 
it's worrisome to some people. We thought that he was going to have like a hundred percent from from Delta State. So, why do you think that this this margin was that small? I don't know what you mean by small. Perhaps if you are a student of statistics, you will understand that in this examination, if this election is taken to be an examination, that the PDP is in the A region. If you score three hundred and um, 60 something and that person is 240 uh, something, that's over uh, 120,000 uh, difference. And so you, can begin to, you can't begin to say it's more. Go and do the statistics and you see the percentage and then the margin between the two. And so even if, if I want to agree with you, but of course without considering that that's a small number, you cannot expect an individual to score 100 percent in an election that is going to be contested. Because the person who is contesting against you has families. He has a wife. He has a, he's going to vote for himself. He has those who have been, may have been working with him. There are persons from his uh, village who perhaps will want to also bring in some primordial sentiments. And so there's no way you can score 100%. For us, we did very well in that election. Given the amount of uh, propaganda that was um, unleashed on us by the APC and the governorship candidate, uh, which were laced with a whole lot of lies, uh, one would have thought that they would even put up a, a better showing. We never thought that we were going to beat them this silly. Because when you have 25 local government areas and you win in 21 out of that 25, go and do the mathematics, you will discover that he did not even get up to 25% of the local governments in the state. So constitutionally, if they were to put it that way without looking at the individual scores at the local government level, if the local governments were to be counted in terms of where you win, like it is in America, once you win a state, you take all the electoral college votes in that state. If our own system were to be a fashion after that particular one, you will discover that uh, if you Gigi, only one in four local governments, and in which case less than 25% of the um, number of local governments in Delta. And so he cannot begin to beat his chest that he came, he did very well in this exam. It's not even a week pass. Ordinarily, if it were to be exam, like I said, he will require a serious repeat so that uh, for him to uh, buckle up. And we are urging him to wait for 2027. So that at the end of the day, perhaps by that time, he would have turned a new leaf because there are a number of things that he has done in the past that accounted largely for his ab abysmal performance in this election. I know you do remember the episode in the Senate where for the first time in the history of the Nigerian Senate, the maze, which is the symbol of authority, was scattered away by talks. Of course, you know who brought those talks into the Senate chamber. And that was why ahead of this election, because we know his ability to progress in that uh, direction, we made sure that we ensured, we made sure that we had no fewer than five able-bodied men in each of the polling units. So that if anybody decide to cut away the ballot box, just like they took away the maze of the Senate, that it would be impossible. And so that was what you saw in a number of these local government that they were not able to carry out uh, those uh, particular style that they seem to have uh, developed in the course of time. And beyond that, many debtors were not also willing to have uh, such a person that um, would have done such a thing and brought shame to our state to become our leader. In addition to the fact that uh, Senator Dr. Ato Ifan Okowa performed very well across the 25 local government areas in the last eight years. This is also in addition to the fact that the candidate of the PDP, Sheriff Oboruwuri, is in tune with the grassroots. He has been the Speaker of the Delta State House of Assembly for close to six years now. He has had a whole lot of grip on the 29 uh, State Assembly constituencies, having presided over the entire assembly where we have 29 members and without any banana peel. So you could see the reason why it wasn't possible for Ovioma Agege to put up a good showing. So I don't want to believe that it's a small margin. It was a margin enough for him to feel um, ashamed of his outing, and which is why even shortly before the election result was announced, he had to run back to Abuja. As I speak to you now, he's in Abuja. He can't even he, to come to Delta. He knows that when the people see him, he will be feeling um, shy. But we are calling him to come and join us. Uh, we, won't, we won't laugh at him. He has uh, done well by at least making sure that we had a contest. And so let him come. There are positions that uh, could be available for him now that he's no longer returning to the Nigerian Senate. Okay, uh, well, uh, let's, let's talk about the strength on which you campaigned and which, like you said, gave you the leverage, uh, gave you the opportunity to return to the House or to the, to the State House uh, because it's your candidate that is now governor-elect and will be sworn in by God's grace uh, on the 29th of May. But be before, okay, after that, we're going to look at the manifesto of Sheriff himself. But right now, tell me the strength on which you campaigned 
and why you think you got what you got? Well, in person, I have mentioned in a few of the reasons why we uh, secured the number of votes that we got that, um, of course, uh, made us to come out top in this election, i.e. the amount of uh, projects Senator Dr. Ifan Oko have carried out in the 25 local government areas, which, of course, placed the PDP in good stead ahead of this election. Then, of course, I have also mentioned the quality and the ability of the governorship candidate. But most importantly, beyond the fact that we have done all this, we came down to the grassroots. You recall that we didn't have a good outing with the presidential election because the obedient movement uh, uh, really um, had a very good um, outing in Delta. And when that happened, it became necessary for us to take a second look at what led to that. And we began a review. In the course of that review, all political leaders of the PDP were asked to return to their wards, not to their local governments. Return to your wards, return to your unit. Go and talk to the people. Explain to them where the way they got it wrong and the things that they may not have been able to understand. And we did that. And once we spoke to our people, like man talk to my man, listen. Our people saw that indeed that we deserve to be appreciated for the enormous work we have done in the last eight years. And that the Buru will also deserve to be elected because of his uh, uh, charismatic nature and the fact that he's in touch with the grassroots. And so once that was done, it was obvious that the, the victory will progress in our own direction. And we spoke to our people, our people listened, and they compared the two candidates. They saw one who they do not even understand his own faith. Of course, you know whether you like it or not, there are primordial sentiments around faith and um, ethnicity. So, but good enough, these two different gentlemen are from the same tribe, if you may like, and of the same from the same senatorial district, that's data central, and of the rubo ethnic extraction. And so they scored equal on that front. And but beyond that, they also know. You also know that Delta is also largely a Christian state. And they saw one who at least is closer to Jesus Christ, while the other one is farther away because of what he practices. That became a minus for him. Secondly, they also saw one who is not a Pandeltan, because all the few things that Senator Omar Gege managed as the deputy senate president to attract from Abuja, he located all of them in just a, spa, a portion of his village, not even the entire village. Not even the entire local government, not to talk of data center. So they have seen a man who is very, very selfish. So even in, from data center, people were scared that if he becomes governor, he will only concentrate in his village and forget that there are other parts of uh, the central senatorial district. All these factors combined with the fact that he has not also been a good leader in the APC. He changed the way, almost every leader until he got this... Um, ticket to become the governorship candidate of the APC. I'm sure you listened to Cairo Ujubu about three days ago, who is the chieftain of the APC, when he mentioned that he was sure that um, Oviyama Gige will not win the election because the way he treated all of them in the party. And so he couldn't have treated them that shabbily and expect that they would also come out to work for him. Besides, our DNA in data, if you examine it, you will see the PDP boldly and green in our DNA, except for the incursion of the Labour Party through the obedient movement. And thank God that DNA has been restored by the victory of uh, Sheriff Oborowori. So my brother, if he comes back tomorrow and says he wants to, uh, want to have another election, I can assure you he will score far less than what he got in this first election. <laughs> okay, let's look at uh, um, Sheriff himself, uh, Oborowori, who is the governor-elect, and what his plans for Deltans and the Delta State is, or are rather, uh, tell us more about his manifesto and the things he believes in. Well, first of all, he has an agenda I could name more, M-O-R-E. And this agenda speaks to a number of issues that have to be a lot of meaningful reforms in a number of sectors, in which case he's going to look at land administration, he's going to look at how we also run our economy. He's going to be on sustaining the many policies and programs of the Okowa administration, because don't forget it's the same party. And of course, we belong to the same family. That is going to also ensure that they bring in more jobs, more entrepreneurs through different uh, ski programs, which today we are running. So he's not only going to sustain it, he's going to expand it. And he spoke eloquently about such. He's also very much interested in deepening the peace and the harmony that exists in the state today, even as he's very much interested in expanding our economy big so that at the end of the day, you have more private sectors coming in than they are, they are at the moment. And then, of course, you have also uh, some form of expansion into the agricultural endowments of the states, 
All these are part of the things that Oboro will address in the course of crisscrossing the 25 local government areas. One other factor, which I didn't remember to mention earlier, as to why Oboro Wuri defeated Uviyamo Gugi very, very resoundingly, is that Oboro Wuri had the time to visit these 25 local government areas three different times in the course of the campaign. Beyond that, the political leaders of the three senatorial districts were enjoined and they truly carried out that order by the governor to reach out to the people in their wards. We have 270 wards in Delta. These 270 wards had interface with leadership, true leadership of the party at the highest level. Obiyama Gege did not have the opportunity of doing that. Since he didn't do that, there are many places he did not visit. And those that doesn't know you are not likely to go and begin to look in your direction. Besides, there are a whole lot of negatives around him, including the fact that uh, he had had a conviction while he was in the U.S. All those we made uh, very known to our members of um, our society. When I mean our society, I'm talking about Delta today. And so, my brother, you will understand that the manifesto of Oborowori, which speaks to expansion of the many programs that Okowa has brought to bear in the last eight years on the landscape of our state, the fact that he is very much also willing to sustain a number of the laudable projects of the okowa led administration, in addition to his uh, touch with the grassroots, is enough for Ovi not to have scored any reasonable uh, vote in the course of this election. And Ovi himself and his followers, they know. They only just pretend that when you talk to them outside the, the public arena, they will tell you that they know that it's going to be a difficult thing. They thought they could take some persons who never had any strong showing politically, who defected some few weeks, some few months, some few days before the election. They thought that they were swelling their ranks, but we knew that it was more like a good riddance to whatever you thought it, it could be. And those people who left, you know what? They lost their units, not even just their world. That tells you that they were not adding much value to the party. So I wonder what they will be doing now. I could see some of them jumping from one place to the other, but you know some of them don't even actually have shame. Before you know now, they'll be running around looking for how they will give them one appointment or the other. In less than six months time now, you'll see some of them running back, jumping from one political party to the other as if they are prostitutes. But of course, you know, politically, we have a lot of them in that term. Uh, Okay, um, that kind just, of, uh, just before we wrap up, uh, let's, let's just look at everybody is now concerned about education, especially uh, after what happened in the elections. And we're concerned about our youths who are going to take this mantle tomorrow. And we talk about education all the time. What plans does uh, or plans do uh, Sheriff have for education for Delta? First of all, Sheriff, in the course of uh, moving around, talked about the need to retweak our curriculum such that it accommodates a whole number of um, uh, programs that we speak to, to this um, life of our people. In our own administration, we have been able to pay a whole lot of emphasis and attention on the, uh, the issue of technical education. Sheriff says he's also going to do that so that you have much more didactic system of learning where the students are able to have the hands-on knowledge in addition to the theoretical knowledge. But beyond that, he's quite uh, very, very um, clear on the, his desire to fund the school system in such a way that uh, you begin to sustain what we're having now. Let me uh, tell you that it's only in Delta that even when the universities and the higher institutions were on strike for eight months, our schools were running. And Oboroboli says he's going to sustain such such that none of the schools, we have four universities in Delta, four state-owned universities. No state in this country can boast of that number. We also have a polytechnics in the uh, different uh, three senatorial districts. No state can boast of that. We have College of Education in the three senatorial districts. And all of them were running even while others were on strike. Does, he, does, he, intend to, does he intend to... Does he intend to... Uh, make the budget for education bigger than what is obtainable right now? And well, it's, how not many just percent? About it's not about making it bigger. You know, doing what works is most important. Thing. Let me tell you, we discuss with our people because everybody is paying lip service to education to assume that you can have free education all through. And at the end of the day, you say education is free, but the quality is in the pit. And what happens? You say don't pay school fee, yet you, are not, you don't have the money to pay the lecturers. You say don't pay school fees. Yes, the classroom are in worst of shape. Don't pay school fees. 
no, med no medical uh, laboratory, no science laboratory. All the things that you re they require for the purpose of having quality education are not in place because you don't have the funds to be able to fund it. But what we did in Delta is to say, okay, just pay a little, meet us halfway. So that even the monies you need to power the generators in the schools, the money you need to clear the grasses, the money you need to repair the electrical appliances in the schools, the money you need to do a few other things, including the temporary staff that you may need to hire, that you should be able to have money at that level. Why the state government is now started with the burden of the payment of salaries of the workers, or in this case the, the lecturers and the other non-academic staff, and at the same time engage in very, very um, huge uh, uh, project that will require huge capital outlay, like building of uh, structures. But when you say completely free, you forget that that money you are using to declare free education also uh, belongs to the son of the carpenter, who has to pay for agreement by his parents for him to even learn carpentry. And you just come and because some persons are privileged to go to school and you say their home must be completely free, there must be a level of payment, no matter how small, such that the parents who also give birth to the child, the society where the child will play, and the government that is in control of what happened in the society will have a role to play. Okay. Because these three entities, the parents, the government, and the society, own the child. And so, as shareholders, All they right. must be able to play a role. And not just to say that you are just budgeting, and at the end of the day, you don't have that money, and you are not able to do other things like it is done in the advanced society. Okay, Mr. Aniago, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming on the program today. Um, well, we're hoping when the time comes, he will be sworn in and our eyes will be clear, will be open, and we'll be watching. Please, please, please and, make sure your ear is also on ground. Because <laughs> and all the sure things that you have said that he's going to do, I hope that he will do it for the benefit of people of Delta and uh, Nigeria in general. Thank you so much. Those of us around him, whether in and out, of, whether in or out of government, at least we'll be able to reach him. Okay. To be able to say, please, you recall you made this promise. Please keep to the promise. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay. We've been talking with the Commissioner for Information in Delta State, Charles Aniagu, and uh, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about other happenings in PDP. Stay with us. <laughs>